Yeah, all right. We got our linen. We got our sewing stuff. Let's do this. Hey, what's up? I have to make a whole other ruffle. I already made one. It's around here somewhere. Ta-da! Yay! And I thought it'd be fun to just do this right now. Show you the process. I have this linen and it's really long. So we're gonna make, we're gonna cut two strips, two strips out of this entire length and sew them together and then ruffle it up and bind it at the ends and roll hem it on the other end. And that's pretty much it. Here I have already made a cut. So now I'm gonna go through with a pin and we are going to pull out a thread to mark a perfect line. Why do I do this every time? I could just guess, because this is what other people do. Do I have the patience for it? No. Am I do it anyway? Yes. These are tiny, tiny, tiny little things. You pull on it and it breaks. Wow, you're doing Okay, fun times. Maybe I need to put on some music or like a podcast. There's that sound out there, right? Where it's like, call it. <laughs> You've only been doing this for like two seconds, but it's already hard. I have gone this far so far. Let's just pretend that we are in the Italian sun, cypress trees and wind is blowing and, and you're just pulling threads out of a piece of linen. First row, can you see it? Can you see that little line? Now we are going to cut on that line. I know that out there, there are people who care this much about precision and I don't judge you. I just d don't agree. One more time. Second line done. Time to trim it out. Should we do some ASMR? <laughs> no. Okay, we got two of them. Two of them! Okay, so now we're connecting the two pieces together in the middle. Some people just whip the selvage. My brain doesn't like that. I'm gonna do a fell stitch. Stitch it down like this, a whip stitch. Keeps all of the rough edges nice, nice and neat and covered and not out in the open where they can cause lots and lots of trouble. Which I guess right now we're gonna do like fast motion or something to make this more interesting. <laughs> And now it's time to roll him. I'm gonna have to listen to something, seriously. This is gonna be a long time, I just wanna say. I mean, look at this. Okay, look, look, okay, look. This is how much roll hemming I gotta do. Still, still roll hemming. Okay. I've done this much. Now I have to go through and I have to do two lines of basting stitches, which I'm gonna gather and then we have to cut ourselves a band that's like 20 inches long. I think that's the measurement. I actually leave the thread on the spool. I can just keep pulling on it and pulling on it until I get to the desired length. Okay, we've got one side attached. It's like the afternoon, I've been doing this all day. <laughs> now we're going to attach this part. We take this, we fold it over, and then we wrap it. We wrap that area, and then we stitch this down. I'm gonna whip every single one of these ruffles, these wrinkles down here. So I'm gonna whip this to each single one, which takes a while also.
I always forget this. Two tablespoons of raw starch, one cup of water. All right, let's go do this. Let's go make the goop. Uh, I don't know if this is how other people do it. So I put all of that stuff into the microwave and every 30 seconds I stirred it. So now we've got this gelatiny stuff that is whew, still a little hot, but this is starch. I use tapioca because it's what I got. <laughs> let's try to do this. I am just working all of this stuff into every single nook and cranny of these ruffles, making sure that it's all coated really good. The bag should make it easier. I have also used parchment paper. Parchment paper is pretty resistant to the stickiness of this stuff too. Get messy. <laughs> Now it's very saturated with the starch. We're going to wait just a little bit for it to dry a little more, and then I'm gonna start taking the excess off, forming it into the figure eights that we are then going to reinforce with the iron later. It's, it's pretty much drying. You can start to hear it. That's literally the stiffness that we're getting. Some of it's still wet, so I'm gonna leave it all night probably, just so that we can really be sure that it's dry. Tomorrow, we will start setting it, which is fun and also painful if you burn yourself. <sighs> I need to find my gloves. Okay, this is the day after the live that I just did where I showed you all how to actually set this rough. And now we're gonna take it off and just look at all these beautiful figure eights that are nicely starched and ready to go. So now I'm going to baste the shoulder ruffle into the sleeve. Once I pinned it on again, just to look, it seemed a little too big and I was kind of freaking out, but I decided to keep going and try it on instead. So I got out my hooks and eyes and started sewing. I put in three sets for now, but I might need more later. Just as a frame of reference again, here are some first-hand sources of what the sleeves actually looked like at the time. And here are the results from what I did. I was a little worried that the ruffles fold down in some places, but looking at the research, you see this too, so it's always exciting when actual sources confirm the behavior of the garments. Overall, I'm quite pleased and excited to move on to making the skirt and finishing this gown. And it has been so much fun to deep dive into this project with you. Stay tuned for the next step in the construction of this garment. Take care, my salty possums. I'll see you next time.